In this prison phone call, Ruby Frankie tells her sister exactly what happened on the day her youngest son escaped from her business partner's home. She also clears up why she was getting a speeding ticket so early in the morning with a child in the car. Yeah, I went, I left early in the morning to go to a dentist appointment with Julie. We left at like three in the morning and she called me sometime in the morning and I and so I went back down but when I got to the house I mean it it looked like it looked like the movies there was a red fire truck there was a black van with tinted windows there was there were two ambulances there were 20 cop cars I mean it was it was did you just sit in your car? No, I I pulled up and found a spot to park. She lives on a cul-de-sac. I parked in the cul-de-sac and I walked up and the, the driveway was just full of cops and I just walked up to the cops. And they said, they said, are you the mother? And I nodded my head and so they took me in and put me in the casita and I sat there for a couple hours. I just sat there and then um, they, they were finishing looking through the house and stuff I think and um, some of the guys were coming in and out with pizza and so I think, I think Eve was still there because the ambulance car was there was eating pizza with the police. And then once once the kids were taken in the ambulance cars, then the detective came and patted me down and arrested me and then took me to the courthouse for questioning, which I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't say anything because Lamar was really helpful. Like, if you ever get arrested, don't say anything. I just didn't say anything. And she How was did like, you find Lamar? Did he was he just assigned to you coincidentally, or did you? Um, so she has a she has an attorney that she's used for connections, and he said I only do like business law. I don't do criminal law. But here's a number of two people who do that I would highly recommend. And so she gave the two numbers, and I got the number from Kevin. I don't, I don't know how the numbers got from, I don't, I don't know how, but um, that he, Kevin said, here's your attorney and this is her attorney. And so, and that was the last time I talked to Kevin. It was a couple of days after my arrest. But So I didn't see Jody at all when I went to the house to turn myself in. I didn't see her. Okay. And, and I went, and they took me to the courthouse and, the detective is like, I've got all night. We can talk all night. And I didn't say anything. I just said, I, I want an attorney. So um, I could hear Kevin in the hallway talking. And then he left. And when they took me out of the room, they took me outside and cuffed me and, and said, again, they cuffed me again. And then put me, they told me you're under arrest for, and then they told me two, two of the charges and then they had me get in the, in the patrol car and that's when I saw Jody. I saw Jody was also in the patrol car and um, she, she had surgery on her shoulder and she couldn't put her hands behind her back so then they pulled her out and changed up the way they arrested her so she could drive with her hands in front of her. And then we had about a 40 minute, 45 minute drive to the jail. And that was the last time I spoke to her. We were in the back. We didn't say a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we talked all the time, but I don't remember really saying a whole lot. We sang a hum, like hummed a couple of hymns and she she was she was still justifying the whole time she was like don't worry don't worry we'll have our day in court 
and then and then when we were booked in, um, they put us in separate cells, and we've been in separate cells ever since.